making his way to the chair. There he is. Channing, how are you, man? Hola, how are you? Sorry, we were uh, we got caught up on the military uh, version of this. <laughs> what what were you doing? Tell me. What were you doing? The military version. Yes, uh, I, I don't know which where what base it was, but we were doing a uh, just we we're basically doing like a like a, a interview with them, with me and Reed, and, and just sort of talking to all our troops. That's that. Awesome. I, I want to talk about that for a second because there obviously there's so much in the news with this um, Ukraine Russia issue, and troops are all over Europe right now. What kinds of things do they ask you? What do you talk about? We definitely don't talk about Ukraine. Uh, that's that, <laughs> that's mm. definitely like it's really about the, their experience as just servicemen and women. And, uh, you know, this movie specifically is about, you know, someone that's out and, and is kind of holding on to certain um, expectations of themselves and, you know, didn't want to didn't want to stop their service, didn't want to stop their career in the, in the Ranger teams. And. And um, ultimately had to kind of let go and and really surrender to what a new life could be. And this dog sort of comes in and, you know, we made a, a documentary for HBO, um, on, it's called War Dog. And it's these multi-purpose canines uh, in the really top elite um, Ranger teams and Delta and and really all the, all the special forces uh, branches. But these dogs and their handlers are very fascinating, fascinating like relationships because these are a type of soldier that I think I think we all do it right. We all like compartmentalize our emotions and things to just sort of survive life, to survive like the the hard things, you know, and, and the complex things. Hmm. And specifically, like I think the military is, and and really this. This type of a soldier, which is the tip of the spear, they're asked to do very, very, very intense, hard things. They are almost masters at compartmentalizing all of their feelings, all of the things that I think would probably break someone like me. And and they just tuck it away and they sort of just they go, okay, that's just down there and we're going to just like forget about that. But these dogs have a really fascinating way to sort of go right into the heart of these sort of super soldiers that are very stoic and they reduce these like strong men into baby talking like <laughs> guys, they're just like you're just so cute as you are and like these guys are killers like, you know? <laughs> like and you're just like oh my god that i did not expect that and uh and you know and it it just melts them and and does this fascinating things i think animals have this way to kind of switch on a certain part of of us as humans that is you know i think really special you know it's true and i'm just thinking about it in terms of being in anywhere in southern california on a street or walking into a coffee shop or standing outside of one people who I, like and i do this like i'll run jog and i'll say hi to people and i notice that like many of them don't even say hi back Right. Like they say nothing back. Like I kind of make a game of it to see how many people are going <laughs> to ignore me. But if you totally. have a dog with like if I have Georgia with me, those yeah. same people will stop and want to play with Georgia, not even look up at the human being. But right. there's yeah. something that there's a wall that is broken by I think, by animals. I think it's like this safe space or something. It's yeah. like this common. I think dogs or animals in general, they don't have guile or or they don't have a, a sort of a I guess a, a frontal cortex where they can like I don't know lie so you know mm. you're getting the most honest sort of present mm. thing yeah you know, they, unconditional yeah, love I, yeah exactly and and so you, you're they're just they can just be really present with this thing and it's kind of this safe space that you can kind of have a moment with a stranger that you don't know and you're like all right you at least take care of this animal so i know that you're not you, you, like you, a complete psycho hopefully <laughs> i'm making well that's we, we we talk about that often here in the world of meeting somebody and going out with someone and like how do you know if someone's not nuts right well at least if they have a dog they can't be totally <laughs> crazy that's true Right? They're at least keeping it alive. You hope. It right? like, yeah. hope, and you hope, it looks like the dog's right. happy. That's a good sign. They care. Yeah. Um, and and this exactly. is yeah. this is this is a co-directorial debut for you, Channing, as well, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, my what? buddy Reed and I, uh, we met almost 15 years ago. We, he wrote Magic Mike with me, and uh, we've produced a lot of things. Um, but you know, he's been kind of just my my creating uh, 
life partner, if you will. Yeah, um, yeah. I was in his wedding vows with his wife. <laughs> <laughs> what was the vow? Uh, right. That I'll, I'll deal with all of your dumb. <laughs> and then she just looked over at me and i was just like hi, hi that's me I'm, i inspire a lot of, one of my best friends so it's, it's hey speaking of magic mike so i'm reading that you're calling it the super bowl of stripper movies does that mean dr dre will be dancing look if we can get him if we can get him right. I, I like i'm i'm so down to have dre in our movie i i would 100 percent put him in the film <laughs> there's no version of him not being in it if he's down uh but yeah no i mean Ultimately, that is just, I think the first two movies were kind of hamstrung into, we had to be somewhat honest to the community of, of like what that reality was in Florida. They're not great dancing. You know, it's, it's sort of clowny. You know, it's all like the first movies, firemen and cops and doctors and, you know, pony and things like that was as far as that we could push it, you know, mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. make it a little probably cooler than it really was. The second movie we pushed it a little bit further than what was reality and i kind of was like i don't want to make a third one we've we've made i think we've got out of jail a little bit free here making movies that are a bit like feather fishes they're movies about men but made for women and we didn't have any really strong storylines for for a woman in in these stories so i was kind of like i think we should i think we're good here mm-hmm. then we went and made a live show uh in vegas with women and, and i was just like what we learned making that show about the space between men and women and and just the space i think that magic mike kind of weirdly lives in we learned a ton and we've there was a lot more i think that we discovered along this and in making in deciding to make a third one i was like look i don't want to make a third one unless we can just like kind of throw away the the handbook if you will and just reinvent what magic mike actually is and let's just make it literally like the like i want like primo ballerina like russian ballet like sort of stripping whatever that looks like <laughs> you know, like, I, I, we're we're literally swinging for the fence like we're i don't even know what's going to happen we're creating some stuff now that it's definitely we haven't done been done before uh and then i also wanted to make sure that we have an equal if not more central role for a female to really tell their point of view through and so what is that role what does it look like uh you know I, Trying to trying, to, I don't want to give away too much. Um, but I think the the most broad way that I could I could say it is that uh, our main character is going to be <clears throat> played by Sandy Newton or Tandaway. I think mm-hmm. is now um, what she looked like to be called, Tandaway Newton. Uh, she is going to be kind of talking around the themes, and and we're going to be exploring the themes of freedom inside of relationship and mm. inside of making decisions for safety as far as like financial reasons and maybe maybe you didn't kind of chase whatever her dreams were because she wanted security in a relationship mm-hmm. and in life and now she finds herself at a, at a certain moment in her life that you know you have to you have to really reevaluate were those the right decisions and what's the right one now and uh am i am i actually being the most free and honest truthful uh Self. So that's to come. That's in the future. That's in the works. Looking forward to that. But Dog is in theaters today. Channing Tatum. Are you barefoot? (laughs) You're touching the earth? You're touching the earth. I could tell. I could I just sense that he was I I could sense he was touching earth. Yes. (laughs) Thanks for coming on, man. Cheers. Thank you so much, man. Always good to talk. See you, bro. Bye.